Bitcoin pushed to a new all-time high at 72K. Where is this going to stop? I have a really good idea. Plus, I'm going to be updating you on Ethereum, XRP, a couple of moonbag coins, and a free AB trading chart all in today's TBO Tuesday. Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Aaron Dishner from The Better Traders, where I can teach anyone how to become a better trader. And that is what this season is all about, giving you a boost of confidence. If you've been trading ever since 2021, 2022, and you're still here, like that's been like one of the hardest markets to ever trade just because it's been so depressing and drawn out and so many financial collapses in the crypto space. Now we're finally being paid for our patience. As I always say, patience pays. So in today's video, I want to go over these five things. First, we're going to be focusing on Bitcoin to $100,000, but and there is a very big but. Ethereum, the target I have short term is $5,000. Actually, I think that's going to be pretty easy given the trajectory it's on. We're also going to be talking about how XRP, Ripple's token, pumped 27% yesterday and how my members actually profited from this because I gave a trade setup based off of what I saw with the, you guessed it, the TBO indicator. We're also going to be looking at some moon bags that I've shared before. If you look at the previous uh, TBO Tuesday videos I've done in the past, I've already covered IRL and I've covered XCN months ago. And I wanted to give you an update on how these are doing. By the way, they're doing very well. Thank you very much. And then I had a question or rather a request that I want to address to you for Dia. And this brings up a really interesting question about this chart. So I don't want to get ahead of myself. Let's start first by looking at the charts. So Bitcoin is crazy bullish, literally knocked the all-time high out of the park. It's currently, rather, it currently has a high of $72,910 here on Bitstamp. But here's the thing. Will Bitcoin hit $100,000? Yeah, I think it's going to. I think it's pretty easy to imagine and see Bitcoin hitting $100,000. Now, the thing that you have to keep in mind about that number is that not only is it a lot of zeros, it's also the 272 or the 1.272 Fibonacci extension level. This is a big deal. Not only do we have a lot of zeros, and I want you to see this because some sometimes people just forget psychology when it comes to trading. When we have a whole lot of zeros in any number, there is going to be resistance at that level. Just want to put that out there first. Second of all, not only is that a lot of zeros, our 1.272 Fibonacci extension level is slightly above it. If you think it's going to be a breeze to pass through 100K, there's going to be a little bit of turbulence. That's all I'm going to tell you. It's not going to be as easy and clean as you think it will. If you thought like, well, 69K, I mean, this should have a lot of resistance. We did see resistance. We just saw a pullback and now it's above. But when we see round numbers like 50K, 20K, 100K, you better believe that we're going to see some resistance when we get closer to that level. Now, before we even get to that level, I want you to see this. Everyone's talking about 100K, but no one's talking about 89 or 90K. What I mean by that is if we just do a simple trend line drawing from this high back in April 2021 to this high in November 2021, we have a very clear line of resistance. And guess what? If Bitcoin were to pump right now today, that number is 88,664 bucks. I don't think... Bitcoin is going to pump this week uh, another 29%. We haven't seen a 29% week in probably eight years. The biggest week we've had so far this year was a 22% week right here, the week of the 26th of February. The next one that's closest to that is back here, March 13th, 2023. This isn't even 26, it's 22%. So please don't get the impression I'm saying, well, we're going to go 28% this week. It's going to happen. I don't think so, but I think by maybe next week, the week after, like the thing about this line though, you obviously can tell because you're all very intelligent people. 
the longer it takes for us to get to this line, the higher this goes. So let's say we don't hit this level this week or next week, but maybe it's plausible to think the week after or the week after that. Basically, $89,000 is going to be a level of interest for traders and for short positions. If you are a leveraged trader and you're looking at Bitcoin going up higher and higher and higher, and you're trying to guess where you want to short based off of levels. So I'm going to short some here. I'm going to short some here. I'm going to short some here. Sound familiar? Um, I would be looking at this level to open up a short, mainly because it's pretty easy to see that this is going to be resistance. It's going to be. So if I were going to short the market, which I am not because I would not, I'm not shorting a bull market. So looking at resistance right here, there will be people that will be shorting this level. Here's what's going to happen. I'm just going to give you, give you the, the skinny on this. Okay. Once Bitcoin gets up to this level, wherever it is, whether it's going to be 88,000 or 89,000 or 90,000, there's going to be people shorting the market. What will happen is exactly what happened back here at 44K to 50K right here this week where it just shot up. Recently this week where the price just moved above the previous all-time high. But what's really going to happen is going to be, actually, this is a better picture of it right here. This is most likely what's going to happen. We're going to see a test and then we're going to see a major push. All we need are a bunch of people saying, ah, I can't go up that high. I'm going to short it here. I'm going to short it here and here and here and here. And the price just has to go, well, basically what it did. It just has to go up higher and then test it and push a little bit higher. Then it's going to trigger the stop loss for all those leveraged shorts. And then it's going to create a a liquidation cascade to the upside. So it's going to force all the short sellers to buy back their positions, pushing the price up higher, triggering the stops of the next tier, pushing the price up higher, triggering the stops of the next tier, pushing it up higher, triggering the stops of the next tier to it pushes up higher. These liquidation cascades are very dangerous on either side, whether you're long or short. This is something you don't want to mess with. Um, we have institutions and ETFs, or rather the companies behind the ETFs, buying more Bitcoin per day than is actually being produced. And this is before the halving. So imagine that just because the halving happens doesn't mean the demand goes down. If anything, it goes up because the amount of Bitcoin that's being mined per day has actually been reduced in half. That's the whole nature of the halving. I'm telling you this because I want you to, to hear this logically. We were previously making decisions about Bitcoin based off of the charts. Now we're starting to look at the fundamentals. More Bitcoin is in demand than is available. That's, I mean, that's pretty much the nature, or not nature, but the basic educational understanding of supply and demand. Way more demand than there is supply, price goes up. So just because we're going to get to 88K does not mean that these ETF desks, these countries, these entities, these big, 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 deep pocketed people, trading desks, investment firms, if it's up to 88K, they're going to keep buying. They're going to keep buying and they're going to keep buying. Uh, It's just crazy. So before we get to that juicy, juicy $100,000 per one Bitcoin, we're going to have some resistance just before that level. So before you get all giddy, when we get to 100K, And we have a pullback at about 89K. You're going to remember this video and you're going to go, oh, that's right. I liked this video, which you're going to do now. Thank you. And I subscribed to that guy's YouTube channel, which you're going to do now. Thank you. And that's right. He totally told me this is going to happen. Yeah. So that's what I'm seeing for Bitcoin. That makes the most sense. Don't listen to anybody that says otherwise in regards to Bitcoin being bearish or topping out. The TBO, the trending breakout indicator, is the best, the easiest to use indicator that I've ever touched. The whole purpose of this indicator is to show you the strength of the trend. Right now, we have 
these four lines of the TBO indicator right here, fast, medium fast, medium slow, and slow. This comprises of the TBO cloud. Well, we get all four of those lines angling up. And this is the weekly time frame. This is a trend that you won't win against. There's no point in going against a trend that is this bullish. I've been saying this for weeks, mainly because we got our first comp uh, rather our first confirmation back here in November 2023 with those white dots again. Notice that white dots, white dots, and we got more white dots over here. If you want to keep things really simple and really clean with the TBO, focus on these guys because when you see TBO breakouts grouped together, which I call a cluster, this can yield some incredible price action to follow. Sometimes it takes a bit of time. Sometimes you'll have to wait a week or a week or two for it to actually do something. It doesn't negate the fact that there's built up, there's a built up breakout that hasn't come to fruition yet and it's going to. That's what it does. Everything about Bitcoin right now looks great. I'm not, I don't need to say anything else other than it's in price discovery mode. We're going to watch out for 89K and then 100K is the next target that we're going to be looking at. It can go higher. We'll talk about that in another video. So let's keep going. Number two, we're going to look at Ethereum. And I do believe Ethereum has $5,000 in its sights. I don't think it's going to be that unrealistic for Ethereum. Why? Well, looky here. We have one TBO breakout on the weekly last week and another one in process or progress right now. So the fact that we got these two TBO breakouts, the TBO cloud looks crazy bullish. Again, all four lines are angling up. This is an ex extremely strong uptrend. Ethereum also has uh, a spot ETF that we, I think we are going to get the decision in May, May 16th or May 23rd, I think, sometime in there. So we still have weeks to go, literal weeks. Let's even just say that it's uh, the 13th. We still have nine weeks to go. When we saw Bitcoin get super excited from the ETF news back here in October, we saw from the news up until it actually happened an increase of 79%. Ethereum's news started right over here on the 5th. So I was saying, well, 79%, that seems, no, no, it can't be there. It has to be up here. Yeah. So 79%, I was saying, well, that's just generous. Like, let's, let's reduce it in half to see if we'll even get that. Guess what? We got it. We got our target of 3,400. We got our target right here, price-based target of $3,500. And now we're looking at another second breakout and we're just closing in on TBO resistance, which is this red dotted line right here. This line of resistance tells us that there should be, doesn't have to be, but there should be some level of resistance. The longer this line is, the stronger it is. Now, with that said, obviously it's not always going to be the case. <laughs> Bitcoin literally just shot through this, but we can see here on the weekly time frame we had resistance here. Price came down; it couldn't break above, fell down again. So this does count as resistance. It does. But over here, we can clearly see. Yikes! I mean, just because it's long historical resistance does not mean the price has to obey that. Okay. So what is a rational target for Ethereum? It's a great question. So far, we're doing an amazing job. Go team Ethereum. Right now, we are just about 20% shy of hitting our all-time high at 5,000. I honestly think that that's going to be pretty easy and attainable within the next week or two weeks. Um, my Ethereum position has been open ever since here. I think at 26K when I, or sorry, 26K, 26,000, sorry, $2,600, $2,600. So I'm sitting on a nice 50% increase, which is good. I still think it can go higher as far as this market cycle is concerned. If we're looking at Bitcoin to do it, a move to at least 100K from where it is right now, that's a 41% increase. We can do a multiple, so maybe a 60% increase before we hit that. So we're looking at 
possibly $6,500 when Bitcoin hits 100K. So I'm just kind of trying to do like a, a relative guess, a guesstimate, but we will hit $5,000 per Ethereum. Now, I'm not going to talk about what that's going to do with the fees of actually sending Ethereum, doing all those transactions on MetaMask and uh, one inch and all that fun stuff. Like the, the higher that Ethereum goes, the more expensive it's going to be to actually do transactions on the Ethereum blockchain. So that's another problem altogether. They're going to have to figure something out because I remember when Ethereum was above $4,500 and trying to do transactions and trade up here was brutal, absolutely brutal. So now that demand is back, we've got to figure something out or use a different coin or a token, like a layer two, like Arbitrum, Optimism. There are tons of them. Solana, the competitor, Cardano, um, Dot, uh, Matic, Polygon, like there are too many layer one and layer twos out there that could compete and offer much better and cheaper fees than Ethereum. But because Ethereum is the top two market cap spot, that's why it's next in line for an ETF. What about everything else? We'll see. It just depends on how well this goes, especially because right now, I believe Gary Gensler of the United States Securities and Exchange Commission, the SEC, is still viewing Ethereum as a security. So it's amazing that we can see this rally and this excitement for a spot ETF for a security that should be illegal. Yeah, right. Well, I, I have my suspicions. Anyway, so going back, what's next? Next, we're going to be taking a look at XRP. The XRP token had a really nice day yesterday. It has these moments where it just shines and completely takes everyone by surprise. Wick to wick, pumped 27%. Now, there was some sort of news. I don't really care. I don't follow the news when it comes to crypto because I pay attention to, to the charts, honestly. The charts tell the story 100% of the time. So yes, there was news. I could see by the volume. I could see by all this stuff. Now, here's the thing though. when when we see that 27% gain, it's a good thing. But you know what? Actually, I already shared this as a trade setup weeks ago. In the middle of February, I opened a trade setup because I knew that Ethereum, sorry, Ethereum, that XRP Ripple would have a bounce because I saw this orange dot right there, the TBO close short. I gave us our target right below TBO resistance. It exceeded it. That's fine. I don't care if it exceeds it because 27% profit is amazing. Going back to trading view, we can see that right here. Here's that TBO close short, which is the main purpose of this symbol right there. The orange dot is to tell us that we are in a, an open short. So that means that we are bearish. When we get this, it's telling us to consider closing any short term, not short term, short leveraged positions and expect a trend change to come. Now, when we see more than one of these, especially near support, that's another symbol altogether. That's extremely bullish for a reversal. So what I did is when I saw that, I let our members know, hey, it might be worth entering right here on the TBO fast line, which happens to be pink. It goes back and forth, okay? So when it's bearish, it's pink. When it's bullish, it's green. So seeing this, TBO close short symbol. We looked for our entry. We got it here at just over 54 cents and sold it just below our historical TBO resistance line. Now see, daily time frame TBO resistance line, just like on Ethereum and just like on Bitcoin's charts, right? So we have this line of resistance. And the longer it is, the stronger it is. Can we get pierces and punctures above? Yes, we did right here back in, in December 2023. It moved about 4% above it, and then it was rejected. Here we have a clear pierce above it, and now we're below. Could it keep going higher? Yeah, it absolutely could. Sure, anything's possible. But I just want to show you that the longer these lines are, the stronger they are, which is why I thought, you know what? Let's enter on the fast line. Let's take profit, not exactly at this value, but just below it, especially because this value note, see that those numbers right there? It's 70 cents. That's a lot of zeros. Sound familiar? 
I am not going to be placing sell orders at 70 cents at a dollar at $100,000. It's the dumbest thing you could do. That's why in the trade setup, you can see that I purposely had our take profit target at what? Approximately 67 cents. So three cents shy of 70 cents. That's the way to do it. And got in, got out, get on with it, right? It's good stuff. So just because um, XRP had some news, that's great. But it's much better to use an indicator like the TBO to let us know when there might be a trend change. And this works on multiple time frames. Here on the daily, it works well. On the four hour, we can also catch TBO close shorts as the price is falling. Note that not every close short is a good one. It really does help to zoom out. And of course, when we go to faster time frames like the five minute or the 30 minute, there's going to be a lot of volatility and there's going to be a lot of quote unquote noise uh, because the time frame is so fast and the price isn't moving um, enough. You're going to see a lot of this like just flashing back and forth and back and forth. It's not so reliable, which is why I prefer to use it on the four hour time frame, which would be the faster time frame. Um, and of course, the daily time frame. All right, so let's regroup. So we've talked about Bitcoin to 100K. We talked about Ethereum going to $5,000. We talked about XRP. Now it's time to revisit our moon bags. So IRL and XCN. I actually want to talk about XCN first, switching it up on you guys. Um, XCN is looking amazing right now, mainly because, I mean, volume is coming in like massively. If I go to the daily time frame. You can see we had this big push. Notice we have the three white dots. Those are breakouts. So even though we saw the price shoot up 60 or sorry, 90%, and then it fell down 25%, it's up. It's actually back up and it made a new high. So congratulations. And yesterday we printed another TBO breakout on the daily time frame. Super duper bullish. Volume is also increasing in a big way. Love to see that. That's a great thing. So how did I even decide to pick a chart like XCN? I'm glad you asked. And I'm going to make this really um, quick and hopefully easy to understand. The first thing I do when I'm investigating super oversold charts that looked like this when I found it is I check the exchange, I look for a bottom, and I look for volume. Okay? So I know that a lot of people won't be looking at Coinbase for these super oversold tokens, okay? But Coinbase is not only a publicly listed company on the New York Stock Exchange, but they're also the custodian of like eight or nine of the Bitcoin spot ETFs. They're not going anywhere. They're also one of the primary on-ramps for retail traders. So in my mind, when I'm looking at charts that are super oversold, yes, I could look at KuCoin. Yes, I could look at OKX. Yes, I could look at HitBTC if that's even still around. I could look at other cryptocurrency exchanges, but because Coinbase is a bit more reputable and trustworthy, I actually think these super oversold charts on here could actually do really well. I mean, this is the same idea why I picked Green Satoshi Token, which pulled basically a 10x. It did a thousand percent. It was amazing. So let me go back. Oh, it's not letting me because of this. Okay. So why did I pick, oh, weird, it's glitching out of me. There we go. There we go. So why did I pick this? Because it's on Coinbase. Now, I, the next thing I do is I look for a bottom. Now, this can be admittedly difficult. What I do when I look for a bottom is, for one, I have to note the time frame. So back here, December 2022, this was when things were still bearish. 2022, like this is when things were still really bad, not bullish at all. Yes, the market was very excited uh, in January up until March or so, but we can see that we found a bottom, we got a pump, but we saw a further downside continuation. Also note the TBO, this outer line right here is the TBO slow line. This is letting us know that the strength of the trend is down. So even if we have pullbacks like this or brother pumps into the cloud, it's probably not going to last so long. But over time, look at what happens to this. This starts to smooth out. And as we try to find new bottoms that are rejected, new bottom that's rejected, the, the gravity lessens. Notice that right here, this chart just went straight down. 
But on this drop right here, after this, it kind of just smoothed out until finally we came here to September or so. And this is where I called it. I honestly just got in at an amazing time. But when I noticed that the TBO slow line was starting to flatten out, that gave me some confidence. When I noticed that it wasn't falling anymore, we had a nice level of support that was respected back in here. This gave me confidence to call XCN. And you know what? I entered it and we've done an amazing job so far. So when it comes to these charts, I look and pay attention to the exchange. I look for a bottom and I look to see if volume is coming in. Now, volume is absolutely coming in because the pump has already happened. If we look at IRL, this is in a completely different position, mainly because IRL has been recently uh, listed starting on December 2023 on KuCoin. The listing high was up here at 65 cents. It fell down 90%, basically to its listing rather opening price. And now we're seeing it from the bottom to where it is right now, up 173%. From when we talked about it a couple of weeks ago, I think maybe it was over here. Maybe it was last week. I can't remember. But either way, it's in like we're in profit. Yesterday had an amazing pump, an amazing push. Newly listed charts like this are very dangerous. But this is the time to start investigating. Now, I understand KuCoin is not the most, sorry, reputable exchange. It's not as uh, trustworthy, I would say, as Coinbase, but they also haven't had a down day. They haven't had major hacking attempts. And if they have, there's so long ago that I've forgotten about it. Um, the TBO looks great. But most importantly, when you're looking for new listings and you're trying to figure out when is a good time, even if the charts already had a 30% pump, if you see volume beating, the day over day volume like this, see how the volume is increasing? Let me just exaggerate it so you can see it like this. When you see volume is just pouring into a chart like this and it hasn't taken off yet, that's a sign because we saw what happened once volume really picked up and then finally the price just went, okay, I give in Poof, and it shoots up 80%. A chart like IRL can and most likely will continue to rally up higher. We've seen this happen all over the place. Uh, I'm not even going to show any other charts. We've just seen it so many, so many times. So a chart like IRL, yes, it can actually go back up to the listing price. It can actually exceed that. It's just one of these crazy times in the market where you can look at charts like this and make a good chunk of change. So our last thing that we're going to look at today is we're going to be looking at DIA. One of you out there, one of you friendly people asked me to look at DIA for whatever reason. Now, maybe it's because I have talked about DIA before on my posts on X, Instagram, YouTube. Um, I've talked about it before. It's actually a decent chart for trading, not so much for like going crazy uh, as far as like what XCN and IRL could do uh, in this market. DIA is more of like uh, it, it had its time. And what I'm saying is like back here. So. This chart existed back when we had the Bitcoin bull rally. So here's November 2020 when Bitcoin was trying to test 20K. It did. It moved all the way up. This chart, Dia, moved up 400%, which is good. Uh, not as great as a lot of the other charts, but it did move up. It had its time. So because this one has already seen a bull market, it's less likely to even come close to where it previously was. What I typically do with this is I use the FIB retracements. Let me see if that's the actual low. Yeah. I mean, it's it's generous to even look to like sell there. Um, I don't get greedy. I don't look to sell all the way at the very tip top. That doesn't make sense. However, a chart like DIA though presents an interesting opportunity because if we zoom in on faster timeframes, this chart is actually giving a whole lot. Here on Binance, we can see it pumping and dumping all the time. This is a, actually a fantastic chart for trading. Now, if there's symbols here on the TBO are too much for you, sometimes it actually helps to simplify it even more and just focus on the cloud and support and resistance. Because you know what? We can use support to resistance bounces to trade charts like this over and over and over, even if it falls. Charts that are on a nice, gentle, steady uptrend are great for trading. But the thing about a chart like this 
is that the BTC counterpart is actually going to be way more lucrative in the long term. Note the difference in the shape of the of the chart. Actually, let's go to the daily time frame. The BTC paired chart right now is just kind of ranging sideways. Uh, we've seen some big pumps up here to about 1,300 sats, but it's kind of staying down here. Expect more of that as Bitcoin pushes up to higher highs. Now, the USD counterpart, of course, is rallying up higher, but because D is not exceeding or outperforming Bitcoin, this chart's going to continue to either stay sideways or drag lower. There's a great time to trade charts like this. Right now, it's risky to use your BTC uh, to buy DIA and to trade it up. There are opportunities. And I mean, there are lots of great little pumps and pops that happen, but we don't want to get greedy. We don't want to just hold out for like two, three, four, five hundred percent. We want to make our money and run. That's how we want to be right now. But if we think about charts that are performing extremely well compared to Bitcoin, for example, um, PYTH is performing really well right now. Therefore, the PYTH against Bitcoin chart is performing a little bit better than Dia. It's still going sideways. But the thing is this, like Bitcoin is so bullish right now, it's difficult to find charts that are outperforming. Even people still comment like, oh, I wish I had a an FBTC DCA bond. I'd just take profit and this and that. It's like, but the reality is that, yeah, but these moves are small, 9%. Yes, it it doesn't suffer from drawdown as much, but would you really just want to hold an F and Bitcoin right now while you could trade it up for stuff that's super bullish instead? I actually don't even think that's there, but XCN, here we go. So we could be trading um, Onyx coin because it's outperforming Bitcoin and doing pretty darn well for ourselves. Now, not all the time, not every trade, and the volume sure does matter on a chart like this, where it's obviously going to be low volume. But we can focus on charts that are super bullish and trade against them with Bitcoin. But as for doing that across the board, it ain't time yet. It's going to be about another 18 weeks until we see a market that will be ready for BTC pairs to pump like crazy so we can stack more stats. Sorry, stack more sets. Okay. Bitcoin will most likely hit $100,000. There'll be resistance. Before we get there though, 89K or 90K, that's going to be a level of contention for Bitcoin. Ethereum should have no problem hitting 5K. It has to obviously break the previous all-time high at around 4,800, but 5K should be easy for Ethereum. The TBO closed short simple, as we saw for XRP. That let us know way ahead of the pump that we saw yesterday that there was a trade setup. There's a trade opportunity happening there with the trending breakout indicator, the TBO indicator. IRL and XCN, I'm holding my positions, but as the price goes up higher, make sure to take some profit off the table at specified intervals that you decide beforehand. Don't be there looking at the trade going like, oh, I think I want to sell some here. No, 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 no. Have the alerts, have the actual take profit targets set up on whatever trading platform you use and just have it there. So you have peace of mind. So you're taking profit. And as the price goes up, boom, you locked in profit. Good job. Most traders don't make money. You just made money. Don't feel bad that the price is going up higher. You did the actual job that you're supposed to do, which is to make money. Um, and finally, DF. Well, it's a good chart. Usually for AB trading, it's risky trading against BTC right now. Yes, you can trade up and you can accumulate DIA, but it probably won't have a really huge upside in my opinion. So I can tell that you want more of this goodness and you might want uh, something more too, like getting access to my watch list, which is available in the Better Traders membership. Again, IRL was shared with everybody back in the beginning of March, and it is since at that time up 74%. It's actually up a lot more right now because at that time it was 12 cents and now it is 16 cents. So we're over 100% profit, which is amazing. So if you want access to the watch list, the TBO, all that fun stuff, the best way to get it is through thebettertraders.com. You can get access to the TBO only 
which is good, or the TBO and a lot of other stuff in the memberships, like the watch lists, like the Discord server, uh, like we have private trading sessions. There's actually, there's too much. I'm going to stop there. But the main thing you need to know is that there's a lot of good stuff that's available in the memberships. Okay. So there's a lot to focus on. What I want you to do next, though, with all this information is I actually want you to click on this playlist that's going to come up next on AB trading. I talked about this briefly with the Dia BTC uh, trading pair. AB trading is one of the easiest and actually one of the most fun ways to grow a small account into a big one. And I have several uh, playlists here on YouTube that are going to show you how to do this. You don't have to pay for anything. You can just watch. You can learn. You can see how it's done. I actually have a playlist and I'll actually put that one up where I turned $100 into $800 over the course of two or three months in a, in a bear market, honestly. So I 8X my account. The goal was the 10X in a month. It took three months to 8X. It's pretty good. So you got to watch that playlist on AB Trading. It's going to be the best thing that you can do moving forward. So until then, you know what to do. Stay awesome and stay in the green. Peace.